Hey, how you doing everyone? It's Green Zero here and I'm back again for my second VOD in two days. Had some time, so I just thought, let's jump in and uh, make another VOD here. This one's got another Steel Ta it's another Steel Talents match. It's got Unleash UA, who's, like OP said in his VOD that I watched earlier today, is pretty much in just about every single replay that makes it. Uh, and he's against Einhell. Uh, I'm not sure who Einhell is. He has been around uh, recently. I have played him a few times. He's random, uh, unleashed is, uh, I'm not sure if he was random or not, it's got steel talents here. Anyway, let's jump straight in, unleashed is going to be on the bottom here, and this is good because it's on Small Town USA, and I don't get a lot of VODs on Small Town USA, so yeah, people tend to just stick to the decision rift, but it's good when you play uh, games on this uh, level here, we can see that uh, Iron Hell is actually a Nod Faction, not quite sure which Nod Faction he has selected here. Uh, anyway, let's have a look, he's drafting some units, he has got Nod Vanilla. So the generic nod versus Steel Towns on Small Town USA. This is good for Unleashed because he's got a pretty good advantage, I would think. Uh, uh, depending on how good his Steel Towns play is, which I know isn't that crash hot. Because when he mirror matches me as Steel Towns, he seems to get spanked pretty hard. I'm not sure if he's going to like me saying that or not. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a much better Trailer 59 player. Although he can pretty much play anything because he's Unleashed. Pretty much play anything and be completely and utterly unbelievable at it. Uh, anyway, he's got some scouts up here. He's going to challenge these guys. The thing about this match, it, this map, is that if you have two factions with garrison, garrisoning uh, abilities, like not including buzzers, you can just go up and deny the enemy scouting like that. He's actually put two nod militant squads in there. Not sure how well that's going to go. Uh, anyway, did get some comments on some of my other VODs. People want, wanting to know what kind of music I was using. If you ever hear any music in my VODs, uh, uh, like uh, halfway through is background music, which you're probably going to be hearing now or later on. Uh, just let me know. I can tell you what song it was. It doesn't matter how old the VOD is. I always have all the music written down in the Vegas files. I do keep the Vegas files so I can open it back up and see what music was used. So if you ever hear any music you like uh, from any of my VODs, just let me know and I'll send you the artist and the song title. Uh, anyway, the, the theme song from my VODs, which starts at the start of every VOD, is uh, by an artist called Shaining. That's S-H-A-Y-N-I-N-G. And the song title is Days, D-A-Y-S, like Days of the Weekend. It's perfectly free. It's electronic, uh, electronica or something like that that I found on YouTube. But you can download all of his songs from his site here. And we can see that Unleashed is going straight for an airfield. Anyway, I just want to point that out because so many people ask me what is the theme song. So that's the theme song. But any other music, just let me know and I'll tell you what it is from any of my VODs. That's cool. It uh, looks like Unleashed, he put down a war factory and he's gone for an airfield as well. So that's uh, obviously upgrading his power plant, selling off his comm center because he doesn't really need it anymore. If he's just, he's got the airfield down, he probably doesn't need it too. He's got three harvesters. So Iron Hell can, I'm pretty sure he used his buggy scout to see that there's an airfield coming. His buggy scout's back up. His scorpion tank's coming and a harvester. Uh oh. Uh oh, there's no double A. Did he see the airfield? Maybe he didn't see the airfield. And look at this, Unleashed is actually selling, sending those orcas out before. Uh, before they even have four four going, and he's actually going to snipe a tank. So that's nice work. And these these bikes, they've got to be careful. Unleash could snipe these bikes with the orcas because it's one orca rocket per bike. And is he going to do that? That buggy's just about dead. He could finish off both those units. So he, it's interesting that he's not going for harvesters. There you go. One bike goes down. Uh, he needs to micro a little bit better. He can get that other bike there, but he's going to run. Is he going to get away? Just nice work. But Unleash sending his orcas forward. Uh, it's the second they were uh, they were built, he's actually trying to reorganize them now. He's got a few pit bulls, he's down a harvester, not a harvester, a refinery. It's dual war factory. This is threatening because Unleashed put himself in a situation by going to airfield first. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Uh, he should have scattered out his opponent a little bit sooner, but he's going to see these up against dual war factory, and he's probably thinking that he's going to be on the back foot. These orcas are going to come down. It depends on how many of these orcas are going to go down. They're actually sniping the bikes. That's a very good job of sniping those bikes. I'm not sure if it was just luck or it just went in his favor or he micro those bikes, but he got every single bike. He paid for it with one orca, which he almost got away with. So he only lost one orca there. That's a nice engagement. Let's whip the screen around because I can't quite see the back there. Sometimes it's a little bit of a glitch with the Sage engine, but uh, you can fix it by zooming in and flipping around like that. Uh, if you can't zoom all the way to the bottom of the screen, sometimes it's stuck. it gets stuck like here. But uh, yes, anyway, we have one, two, three, four harvesters. So he's got four harvesters. You think he'd drop a barracks and just take these buildings because, oh man, bike buggy is just going to get locked down. Uh, like crazy if he takes his garrisons and he's doing that as well. Iron Hill is pushing bike buggy and this isn't the level for it. Oh man, I think Unleash is going to be too good. I mean, a pro can really uh, lock down this kind of strategy. Let's see a micro his harvesters. The orcas are actually coming back up. He didn't rebuild the orca he lost and he may pay for it with one harvester. That one harvester just manages to take cover behind the war factory, get some repairs. None of the orcas were shot down. That's interesting. That harvester may be going down soon enough though. He's trying to move it. I think he is going to lose it there, but he managed to keep it alive for a lot longer than he really uh, should have. 
and it goes down now. Orcus Strike comes in and nails a buggy side. I guess that's paid for itself. These Orcas probably are going to get worked off the deck. That Conyard needs to redeploy. Oh, oh no, Unleashed. Redeploy your Conyard. He's just going Rambo style, just driving through all that combat. He didn't even take a single hit. There's a tiny slice of damage there. And here you go. Unleashed is taking these buildings. And oh, this is going to completely lock down. Like I said, uh, Bike Buggy has got nothing on this level. All you need to do is rock it up the center and you're going to you're gonna have a field day there. He's probably going to bring some flame units out, although his Conyard is on the move. His Conyard is over here. And a very, very powerful uh, strategy on this level is to scout when your opponent expands and expand in the same direction as him because if you War Factory silo wall tighten up, you'll win just about every single time. Unless they have a tech center first, don't, don't try it if they've got a tech center because they use tier 3 base defenses. The Conyard is forced to deploy ahead of time. No more Orcas coming about. There's Bikes coming coming around the side. You think he'd have more rocket troopers out. He's got rocket troopers in buildings here and here. Oh no, that's a rifleman squad. And he's trying to defend out with watchtowers. That one harvester making a run for the wall factory and he may know he doesn't get away. Oh man, Iron, Iron Hill putting on some serious pressure here. I mean, Unleashed, I thought he would have done a better job countering that, but uh, Iron Hill may have made that just pay. He's almost got another harvester there. That one's pretty heavily damaged. Uh, Unleashed has four and two. Uh, there's Scorpion tanks coming out. So this is a little better by Iron Hill. These Scorpion tanks, if they avoid uh, these are uh, rocket garrisons, which there's actually only one again, so yeah, he's probably going to be okay. Unleash going back to Orca production though. And these Titans, if they can close to the buildings, they'll have a massive advantage because they can crush the units as they come around the buildings, use the buildings as cover, and Iron Hill is quickly locked down. This is why Steel Tower is so potent on this level. Uh, he's actually rebuilt a command post over there. It's very difficult to place structures on this uh, bridge here because it's actually slanted. You can see here it's slanted down so you can't place uh, too big a structures over there. And those Orcas are going to catch some of those tanks out. Iron Hill, ooh, he's not going to be too happy about that. Although, uh, how many tanks are going to go down? He could get two more. Yes, just going to get two more there. He's still pumping out tanks. He doesn't have any double A here. He's got one buggy, but Iron Hill is going to be comfortable in the fact that he has two refineries there. He's going to want to transfer his harvesters over. Some of them being transferred over now. The others are just going and returning what little... Uh, uh, ref ah. Tiberium they have left. One is going down here. you got to watch this level because the ty the harvesters will just completely pick at random which field they want to go to. I think whichever one they think is closer, they'll just go to and you can lose harvesters like that. But Unleash doesn't have any stealth detection. Not harvesters are stealth, so leeching, they're the best faction to do to, to uh, Tiberium leeching for. And oh man, Unleash really unorthodox orc use here. They're coming out like almost single file or in, or in pairs. Only once or twice have we seen them come out in a big group there, but Unleash is going to have to place down some more refineries, transfer his harvesters over. Harvester's over, that harvester's still going here, yeah, he really needs to micro his harvesters, he's got no Tiberium there, he should move them across, there's one over here, there's another one there, which is just going back for some repairs, not repairs, oh man, screwed that up, he's not going for repairs, he's going to put some Tiberium in the bank, and oh no, here come these uh, Scorpion tanks, and this is going to be bad for Unleash, he needs some kind of cover, he needs to drop something to protect these Titans, but I don't think he has build radius out here, he's only got build radius near this refinery, and those Orcas are going to come in and help him, have they got hard points, they do have hard points, so this is critical, uh, Hardpoint Orcas can pump out a lot of rockets, they have nine rockets, and they can really uh they have a lot of longevity here they can really hit these uh scorpion tanks but the scorpion tanks are all pulling back you think unleash would might try to snipe the very heavily damaged units there oh man splitting his fire like crazy and he's actually come out with a lot of kills there that scorpion tank barely escaping so not rebuilding a fourth orca now getting some tines out he's probably working on a second refinery what's he got he's actually got nothing queued up oh no there he goes he just dropped it he's lightning quick they just dropped their second ref. They are pretty close together. I'm not sure a well-aimed catalyst may be able to knock those down. But a tech center, look at that tech center, it's just being dropped here right next to the comm center. And I think he's going for dozer blades. So he's obviously planning on keeping those scorpion tanks. Again, because of the choke points on this map, the choke points on these bridges, the choke points in the center of the map, and over here, tanks don't do as well as they probably could unless you got the garrison clearers. And look at this, these rockets are running towards this structure over here. I'm not sure what they can achieve. There are actually some pitbulls coming, so maybe the pitbulls will reveal the harvesters. The rockets may be out of... Oh, it's probably going to be a bit tight for range here, but these orc... Uh, not these orcas, these tines, there's just a couple of them, and there's a lot of scorpion tanks there, and they're trying to run for the building. There's actually no rockets in it. He could really benefit from rockets in that building. There's three tines left. Two times, here we go. There's times out in the open. They're just going to get overwhelmed. They're going to put a little bit more pain on these scorpion tanks here. They may be able to get one or two more if they focus down. Probably here come the orcas though, and there's no double A, and they have hard points, and they're going to snipe down all of these scorpion tanks. There's a few buggies there, but buggies are not the most powerful anti-air unless there's like a ton of them. And he's uh, he's actually lost one orca. There is a stealth tank. We saw that stealth tank go over there. Is he getting tib core rockets? No tib core rockets. Uh, those people are finally getting cleaned up. Here comes the flame units there. He's actually sold off his operation center, so he's got no tier 2 abilities in those. Oh man, Unleash not paying attention, loses all those guys to the flame. That's uh, not good. Unleash, he does have a good economy though. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, he's got 7 and 3. Oh man, he's got tons of... And you can do that on the bottom field because it is quite large. 
But uh, yeah, what's he gonna do? He's actually hunting down some stealth tanks. One stealth tank goes down, a second stealth tank manages to escape. Unleash should really hunt those down. You can't really let stealth tanks take control. You gotta hunt them down and steal our talents, you know. Don't let them get map control, chase them down. You can use the sensor pods on the orcas, it's great against Nod just in general. You can fire them onto the ground or onto structures. If you fire them onto structures, they just can't get rid of them. Uh, not unless they uh, sell the structure or if it's damaged, they can repair it and instantly destroys it. But uh, yeah, you put them on uh, neutral structures, it works a lot better. If you put a sensor pod on a neutral structure, uh, they can't actually destroy the sensor pod unless they destroy the whole structure. Uh, not that they know it's there because uh, it's stealth, so unless they've got stealth detection they're not even going to realize it's there and most of the time they don't realize their stealth tanks have actually been compromised and they're not uh, they're not stealth and then you just walk up and destroy them while they're on hold fire stance because a lot of pros will put their stealth tanks on hold fire so they don't give away their position when they're ordering them around with waypoints and stuff. But Iron Hell has come out with a Redeemer and he's got a flame unit here and oh man here come these peoples and orcas they're probably going to want to snipe down that uh, one uh, stealth tank and they get it, nice work, there's no double A. The AA in general has been really weak by Iron Hill, and actually uses the Pulse Scan, which is the other ability of the, the Orca you rarely ever see it used. It's only used, uh, well actually it is used against Nod Harvesters, a reasonably large amount, and he's actually force firing there, which is a terrible idea because he's never going to hit them. Yeah, the Pulse Scan reveals a small area, about about probably this big, that big there, or if you can see that on the, the VOD, about that big there, and it keeps the area revealed for about 5 or 6 seconds. i um, not quite sure how long really, but it feels like about 5 or 6 seconds and a MARP coming out, and something is upgrading, oh this is going to be interesting, if that's Railguns, is that going to, no, it can't possibly be Railguns, he's got nothing to utilize Railguns, and he's going for a MARP, Railguns plus MARP, it's, it's very expensive, you can't really afford to do it, he might be going for Pitbull upgrade, but his Pitbulls are getting worn down, they're getting chased, Unleash, you need to get those guys away right now, they're getting shot at, I don't think they're going to destroy anything here, they're actually tr running to this, the back corner here, what's happening, Orcas flying through the middle of the map, they still have hard points, no sensor pods, uh, they're going to find the Redeemer over here, the Redeemer is not stealth and they're going to put some rockets into that, that's nice work, but he's not going to be able to destroy it. Avatar coming out as well, so he's looking for a very heavy ground force, if he can get a couple of Avatars up with that Redeemer, it'll be very very potent against ground, uh, very hard to dislodge, although he need, finally, he I think it's the first Sam turret he's actually ever built in this game, he's not upgrading anything, no tip core. Doesn't really need Tibcord against just four, just one airfield of Orcas, and he did get Railguns unleashed. Oh man, that's not logical. But this is unleashed, and he's never logical. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's got one unit that can utilize Railguns. That's a four thousand dollar upgrade, and now he's got two Mammoth tanks. So I guess they are going to do some good. But the thing is here that it looks like Vertigo's might be the go ahead, or maybe that was placed just for the mine drop. But uh, yeah, those Railgun units are probably just going to get a uh, Rage Gen and blow the crap out of each other. I would have thought Behemoths would have been better. Behemoths have a much harder time killing each other when they're raged, especially when they're already shooting. This is probably going to be another Mammoth tank. Is it going to be? Yes, another Mammoth tank. He's not going for adaptive armor, which is interesting. Uh, most Steel Talons, well, it's actually not a lot of Steel Talons pros, but Steel Talons uh, in general. If you get Railguns, you probably should be thinking about getting uh, getting the um, adaptive armor as well, because it makes your forces extremely hard to kill, especially they absorb, t like, Mammoth tanks can absorb a ton of rocket damage when they have the adaptive armor activated. Yeah, so those uh, orcas, they're just cleaning up, cleaning up those guys. There's actually an elite orca, and we had a lot, a couple of games back where Unleash really worked his orcas. And if we, we had take, bring up the health bars, we've got two veteran and one elite. So that's nice. He's got four mammoth tanks here as well. So uh, that that redeemer not really uh, coming into play. He is not building. No way. He's building a, uh, what do you call it? Vertigos, but they were a long time coming. He's got uh, imp coil raider buggies. Again, it would have been beneficial to have built uh, or upgraded the adaptive armor. It's only a thousand dollars. It's only thirty seconds. And it would it just makes all the difference in the world against the EMP. It stops Shockwave from any enemy GDI teams and unleash. Oh, target the avatars, man! You can destroy them, but you can't destroy the Redeemer. They might want to snipe some of these buggies down. Although what's going on here? There's a Behemoth standing out in the open. These Mammoth tanks are quite a way back from it. So he's gone Railgun, Mammoth, and Behemoth, and Marv. He's poured all of his money into this, and he's going to have to make a move soon because he's almost out of Tiberium. And if he's out of Tiberium, his forces won't grow nowhere near as fast as what Iron Hills will grow because look at all the Tiberium he's got left, he'll just build up a larger force uh, he'll have more money at his disposal and be able to do a lot more and look at that, they destroy their own behemoth and these railgun mammoths may want to just chase that redeemer there is a scan going down, although he has actually got uh, pitbulls there, so probably not necessary I'm not sure if, is he using the RGA? No, he's definitely not using the RGA he probably, I mean he could use it against the, the redeemer but here come those old raider buggies, they're gonna, oh no Oh, this is terrible. He gets every single mammoth thing. He actually empties his own uh, avatar as well, so he's not actually going to be able to do anything. He could bomb them right now. There is a beacon. Is that a Tib Chem? It may be a Tib Vapor Bomb. Oh, that causes a lot of damage. It actually blows his own avatar up. 
that she might have actually been destroyed. And none of those mammoth tanks actually went down yet. One of them just barely escaping. The mob is coming around with a single behemoth and it has a rifle garrison in there as well. And he's attacking. Oh no, get rid of those raider buggies. Oh no, and the, that force is completely disabled right now. Where are the orcas? Where are the orcas? They're on the deck reloading. There they are. He still has all four, no sensor pods yet, he hasn't recovered that husk, and he's sending these mammoth tanks forward, he doesn't care about health on these guys, he's just sending them forward, if he uses the RGA, he's definitely going to blow that one up, he just activated the RGA by the way, there we go, but as we can see, blowing his own forces up there, uh, he is going to be able to destroy this redeeming, if he's positioned well enough, that mammoth tank there is going to blow up to the railgun accelerator, and there we go. Uh, he hasn't actually managed to kill that. It uh, looks like the Marv is still going. These Orcas are still putting on some pain. There is two Mammoth Tanks over here as well. I'm not sure where they came from. And the Conyard is down. That's going to be critical. That is going to be absolutely critical because he can't build any structures. And we can see he's going to target power plants, with, which is a very good idea. No power. What is that? A mine drop? That Mammoth Tank is not going to want to move. Neither is that Marv. And he's selling off. He can't really afford to be selling off too much because he's, he can't replace any of these structures. Uh, not in the short term anyway. And the Redeemer has managed to escape, and what happened there? Oh, two behemoths going down, probably the Vertigos. A uh, little bit of delay in the animation there. Or maybe they were shot at by the Railgun unit. He needs to recover these husks like crazy. The Marv is still going. It still has a lot of health left. I don't think the Redeemer can engage. There's one Emp buggy. He needs to finish that off right now, but no, he Emps the Marv. Einhell is in all sorts of trouble, but he's really holding on here. And the Rage Gen goes off. He can't give any orders to his Mammoth tanks while they're under Rage Gen, so that is just going to yeah end up getting them killed. You've got to watch out when you're chasing Redeemers. They can just Rage Gen and turn around and crush you because you know, you've know you got the orders. And look at that. Another Emp goes off. Did he get any of those Emp buggies? He tried to crush. He's actually emped his own Redeemer, which is not good, which is veteran, by the way. What's happening over here? Uh, destruction a galore over there. These orcas are still going. He's got a second elite one, and if he knocks that power plant out, he has. He's down to just one power plant. He's selling off his base like crazy. He just sold his tech center. He needs to get out an MCV right now, but he's building nothing but empire. Like, where did that mammoth tank? How did that mammoth tank get in there? There's a veteran one inside the field. I did not see that get in, and it's been destroyed. The Marv, surprisingly, is, again, still going with about 75% of its health. I didn't see that. There's another Mammoth Tank. Unleash is just streaming forces across here. A uh, single file. He's kind of out of tip. All this harvest is not sure what they're doing. He probably should push up there, although there's not much Tiber in there. He's actually building Titans for some reason. I'm not sure why. They're a little bit more mobile. There's two Mammoth Tanks coming in now. This could be the very end of that uh, Redeemer, finally. The Marv still going. And look at that. He's sniping down the Raider Buggies, which is a lot smarter. You think Unleash would have done that a little bit sooner. Snipe down the Raider Buggies, oh watch out, there's one more, and oh man, once that Imp goes on, it just crawls, it hits one unit and crawls to the next, and those uh, Orcas may actually be able to finish the job, those two elite ones there, oh no, it's gone Stealth, Stealth Redeemer, and it's crushing those guys there, oh, they finally take it out, and those Orcas, one of them goes Heroic, and I just pushed the Escape button, because I meant to push the, uh, the Tilda button, there you go, he's got two Veterans, and one Heroic, no, no two, no, two Elite and one Heroic, oh man, that is serious, he lost his Marv, but there's one Mammoth Tank left, just coming through here now, I'm not quite sure what Iron Hill can do, he has been under siege for the last like seven or eight minutes, non-stop, Unleash just does not want to let go of this, and there is even an Ion Cannon on the field, so man, super aggressive, great level for Steel Talons and Unleashed, although he was a little bit wasteful, he didn't quite bring everything he needed, and he kind of invested too heavily, I think, in the late game, he got like everything, he got Railguns, Mammoths, Behemoths, Marv, uh, yeah, he just made it viable, obviously, he's lost one Orca there, which he hasn't rebuilt, but these Orcas are, they're going to be so powerful, he still has not reclaimed these three husks, he can't afford to leave them there, especially since he's got no Tiberium, could sell off some of those refineries, he needs to end the game right now, that Behemoth is just going solo through there, he's actually crushing, oh man, he crushed two buggies, oh, that's not good, if he had a Rifleman squad inside, he could gun these infantry down instead of crushing them. And I'm not sure where that's going. Iron Hell is pretty much all but dead. Unleash does have this spike here. One of his spikes was destroyed at some point in time. So he's on two spikes and Iron Hell is on one spike. This better be an MCV, otherwise he's dead. Uh, these Orcas, I think, are just about to come back in. Yes, what is that? Whatever it was, it was just... No, it was not cancelled. It is an MCV, but these Orcas... Oh, man, look how quickly they can cap these guys off. They could have even probably destroyed the MCV if they were paying attention. Maybe, and look at that, oh, they just shoot so fast, the MCV is back out by Iron Hell, but I think Unleash has pretty much got this one wrapped up, I'd like to see how much money uh, Iron Hell has remaining, he's actually got one Harvester, which did manage to escape the scan, and re-stealth away, and he's placing his power plants now, he's very low on power, so it would have taken a long time to build that construction yard, considering how low on power he was, he could have powered down, perhaps the refinery, although he'd probably need the money, and look at that, that behemoth finally goes down, and it actually gives him a heroic militant squad. Pity there's only one unit left in that militant squad trying to take cover behind the building there. 
There we go. So that's probably not really going to matter much at all. And there is a big line of Titans here. There's three, six. Really, I thought he should have got adaptive armor. It would have helped him a ton in those battles as well. And Iron Hell has actually surrendered there. So obviously, he was not going to win from... He was pretty much dead. So he would have just been playing out uh, that game there. So that was actually pretty good. So uh, pretty uh, full on. So Iron Hell just got sieged for the last like seven or eight minutes. And oh man, Unleash really... I shoved it to him a little bit wasteful, but that's okay because he was the aggressive one and he actually made it work. So it's all good for Unleash there. We can see 146,000 to Unleash, 122,000 to Iron Hill. So it's 24,000 in favor Unleashed, which uh, in a 20 minute game is uh, it's substantial. It's what you'd expect considering Unleash came out ahead. Uh, yeah, $24,000. That is a nice buffer considering how aggressive he was. You can see he was initially behind with his unorthodox tactics as usual, and then he just recovered and got and sliced right in front of Iron Hill, despite Iron Hill getting his expansion up a lot sooner. And Unleash, obviously, with his triple ref, just cruised to victory there, splitting it up. And what do we have here? Structures pretty much up and down. Iron Hill trying to sell off to keep himself alive, which was a good move, by the way. He's trying to sell up, trying to hang in there. Did everything he could not to give up. You never just give up, you know. you got to keep fighting, because there was a possibility he could have come back, because Unleash, again, was being quite wasteful. And uh, being super aggressive, he had to be a little bit wasteful, but Iron Hill there fighting right down to the end. So that was a very good match. Units up and down. You can see that Iron Hill lost pretty badly there at the uh, 12 to 14 minute mark there. He just got, was just getting tanked uh, big time. But uh, yeah, still managing to hold on. That's well done. So anyway, let's have a look. Favorite unit, Pitbull by Unleashed. That's unusual. And Raider Buggy by Iron Hill. Again, I really thought he could have done with adaptive armor. But uh, anyway, this is my second fight in two days. So I just thought... I jumped straight into the Steel Talons match, and it was really good. Uh, head on over and check out the replay if you liked it. Uh, anyway, I hope you'll enjoy this replay, and I'll see you all next time.